Why do you play games? Think you know the answer? Think again! Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that normally would have a joke here, but screw it, we just passed a million subscribers! After months of struggling to pass high-minded channels like Jay Leno's Garage and Arabic Boobs TV, we finally joined the Elite Million Plus Club. Alongside 45 Vivo channels, 35 girls who show you how to do their makeup, and no less than 5 Smosh channels. Truly, we are surrounded by greatness. And in the epic struggle of brains versus bro fists, that means we're only 15 mi- wait, sorry, 16 mil- uh, 17 million away from catching the pudes. <sighs> Give it time. Anyway, to celebrate this tremendous milestone that you, loyal theorists, have helped us reach, I wanted to tackle something big. Something that was more than just a specific game theory. Something about you, me, and gaming culture as a whole. So today, I want to cover the most fundamental question possible. Why do we play video games? And for everyone who just went into the comments and typed, cuz they're fun, this slow clap is for you. Because fun is only the beginning. Why are they fun? Why are we compelled to do fun things? And what do the games we play say about us as people? Those answers can be extremely personal, which means I have a lot to cover today. So without further ado, let's just- One correction. We have a lot to cover. Park, is that a squeaky-voiced Goomba I hear on the horizon? The reason a gamer games clearly varies as you travel between cultures, and who better to talk about that than a certain geographically-minded Goomba? If this is our big 1 million subscriber collaboration, I suppose I should join in too then, huh? Ronnie? Is that you? Where have you been, buddy? I thought the mercury toothpaste or bottle-nosed dolphins had finally gotten to you. Nope, just the hours of editing these episodes. <laughs> They certainly do take a long time. Thanks for doing that, by the way. As you can see by the numbers, the time certainly hasn't been wasted. Though I think we can all agree that we miss your unique take on gaming and constant self-deprecation. Well, at least we don't have to put up with your outdated rage faces anymore. Hey, at least I have actual animation and not some jerky stop motion. Ronald? Chestnut? Please, let's try to remain positive. This is a celebration, after all. And besides, Ronnie, if you really wanted to provoke the Goomba, you'd clearly mention his wife's well-endowed avatar. I mean, Goombas just shouldn't have boobs, dude. You go ahead and keep talking in the hand I don't have. GG, GG, GG. Way to take the high road. Anyway, why do we play games? As I mentioned already, yes, clearly there is some fun to be had guiding a sociopath through an elaborately staged kidnapping or performing poorly named aerial maneuvers, but we have to ask ourselves what needs video games fulfill in our lives that make us want to play them. In the immortal words of Dr. Phil, people do what works. If our needs weren't being taken care of by video games, we wouldn't play them. According to Scott Rigby, gaming researcher and author of the book Glued to Games, video games help us satisfy three core needs in our lives. Competence, autonomy, and relatedness. That spells car. J j j just so you know. Well, it does. Excellent contribution there, Ronald. In short, car is like a significantly lamer version of the Triforce. The first piece is competence. This is the feeling of mastery. It's the sense that you're growing, learning, and progressing. Completionists and achievement hunters? This one's for you. Autonomy, meanwhile, is just that. The sense that you have control over your actions. And, to a large extent, the world around you. People drawn to autonomy-oriented games like uninhibited choices, choosing their own adventure rather than being forced down a set path of experiences, the Skyrims and WoWs of the world. And finally, relatedness, the need to feel like we matter to others and that we're making a contribution to society. Unsurprisingly, these are most exemplified by the multiplayer games, the games we're drawn to, the games we find most fun are those that best fit our individual needs. For example, I'm drawn to platformers, Mario, Sonic, Mega Man. Platformers appeal most to those who seek that 
that first Triforce piece, competence or mastery. The games I'm drawn to are the ones I'm able to pick up and quickly make progress through, finishing levels, beating bosses, watching my character gain more powers quickly, and seeing myself able to handle increasingly difficult puzzles. The more I play, the more competent I feel. That would make me relatedness, since so much of my play revolves around engaging with other people. Whether it's playing Left 4 Dead with the Gecko Ninja or Borderlands with my lovely Aki, gaming for me is a social experience shared best by friends. And I'll take autonomy because... that's what's left. You see, it's funny because it's autonomy, but I'm taking it because I have no choice. In all seriousness though, choice in and of itself isn't quite enough to capture a player's interest. The choice a player is given also has to feel meaningful. The player needs to feel as if they have control over their actions, and their actions impact the virtual world around them. So say you have a poorly designed fighting game where each character has 45 different moves, but only one or two of those moves is actually useful. It doesn't matter that you have tons of moves to choose from because you're only ever going to use the two good ones. Even though you're given tons of options, there's not much of a choice to make. Also notice that sometimes it doesn't matter if the player is given a choice or not, or if the choice has actually had an impact or not. What matters is if the player feels like they were given a choice, or if their choice felt like it mattered. Mass Effect uses carefully crafted dialogue trees to achieve this illusion. This game constantly has the player making choices about what to say or do in certain situations, and some of these choices feel incredibly meaningful to the player. But a lot of the time, behind the scenes, it didn't actually matter which dialogue option the player chose. All three of them would yield the exact same result. The player doesn't know that, though. It legitimately felt like the player made a good or bad judgment call. Whether or not it actually affected the narrative doesn't matter. What matters is if the player feels like their choice affected the narrative. And there you have it. When our powers combine, lame Triforce complete. I think the point here is that every gamer games to fulfill different combinations of the same three needs. And what those needs are vary not from gamer to gamer, but culture to culture. Look at Japan. You would look at Japan. As I was saying, a lot of their games have boiled down to mostly dating sims and rhythm games, stuff the majority of us here in the West just couldn't care less about. Hey, I'll have you know that I make DDR look good. But when you come right down to it, the emphasis on these types of games perfectly reflect needs in Japanese culture. Think about it. Japan has always been focused on precision. Every day, samurai operated with the knowledge that one move could mean life or death. It's a key component in Bushido. But when Bushido became unnecessary, the mentality never left. Rhythm games are just the latest incarnation of the cultural need for precision and mastery. Dating sims, meanwhile, come from a more present-day issue. Recently, Japan has been having an upheaval in their long-held gender roles. Men are tired of 60-hour work weeks meant to support marriages they're barely involved in. As a result, fewer and fewer are getting married, claiming relationships take way too much from their time and their work. Dating sims then fill the role of the relationship by giving them a perfect woman, waiting for their beck and call. Cultural pressures have left a relatedness needed in their lives that this genre of video game has filled. Something more amazing is the advent of the global market. With so many people getting access to so many different kinds of games, gamers the world over are starting to realize car needs they never knew they had. For example, my old Japanese buddy Hutch always played shooters. From Fallout 3 to Battlefield 1942, he really enjoyed the sense of freedom that those games brought. But most Japanese domestic games are incredibly linear. Because Japan's games were so focused on competence, mastery, and precision rather than exploration or the ability to choose, he needed Western games to satisfy his autonomy needs. With globalization of gaming comes the globalization of culture, and with that, we expose ourselves to completely different ways of thinking. Over the centuries, we've gravitated towards experiences that make us feel more competent, more autonomous, and more related because those experiences just make us feel good. And even though work, school, and family can all fulfill those core needs, we're coming to realize that video games are the most seductive, because they quickly and easily satisfy all three. Achieving a relationship with a real girl? Difficult, and often humiliating. Achieving a relationship with a virtual girl? Easy and low risk. As the only non-married guy on this channel, I'd just like to say, Ladies, if you want to get with the editor of a popular web series, send your selfies to digressinginsidequesting at gmail.com. As for me, I... I look like this, except with fewer straight lines, bushier hair, and opposable thumbs. And you know, it's funny, but not only do we game for these reasons, but our shows exist for them too. Goomba, relatedness is why you started Game Exchange in the first place, no? Absolutely! I wanted the show to explore how we could use games as a means of understanding and relating to other cultures. Watching other gamers make fun of our misinterpret cultural references made me realize the need for something to explain these things because ultimately, a greater understanding of culture and history leads us to a much richer gaming experience. And hopefully, in some small way, I've been able to provide that. 
And Ronnie, you've always valued autonomy in your work, right? I mean, you freelance, you've started multiple shows, websites, and podcasts. You're very much a self-starter. I mean, our paths crossed when you wanted to interview me for a podcast series you were doing. After only seven episodes of the show! And now, 57 episodes and a million subscribers later, here we are. And you're an integral piece! Why, yes, you couldn't have done it without me. If I hadn't made the decision to scrape you out of the gutter, take you under my wing, and give you a shot on my insanely popular podcast, we wouldn't be where we are today. If it wasn't for my personal ambition, my hunger for meaningful choices in life, my thirst for self-determination, none of this would have ever happened. You're welcome, Internet. Send selfies to digressing and sidequesting at gmail.com. And then there's game theory. I talked about this briefly in my Draw My Life video, so I won't linger on it too long, but this show evolved from a period in my life when I was having trouble finding a job. Even though I thought of it purely as a resume booster, what I didn't realize until just now writing this paragraph was that this show filled all three major gaps in my life. It made me feel smart and competent at a time when I was doubting my self-worth. It gave me autonomy over a project at a time when I felt unable to control anything in the real world world, and it helped me relate to the gamer community at a time when I felt most isolated. Gaming, this show, you watching right now, you helped me through. So to sum it all up, why do we play games? To connect to people who share our interests, our goals, and our love of boob jokes. To empower ourselves to explore, discover, and shape the world around us. And finally, to gain real life experience points. To meet the needs we find ourselves facing at different points in our lives. And to achieve both on the screen and off. We are the game theorists, and we believe that gaming can be educational, learning can be fun, and that those two ideas are related. We believe that the gaming community can, should be, and is so much more than it's currently given credit for. And we believe that we have one of the best, most thoughtful, and most accepting communities here on YouTube. So, why do you play games? That, loyal theorists, is your theory. Your Game Theory! Thanks for subscribing! Welcome back to the Super Amazing End Card Tournament, where last time you chose E.T., Bubsy 3D, and Sonic 06 as the worst games of all time. You know, it's funny that most of those are either ones that James reviewed or the Game Grumps reviewed. Yeah, I noticed that too. Maybe one day we should do a Game Theory on trusting the opinions of an authority figure. Ronnie, is, is that you? Oh, thank goodness. For a minute there, I thought your hair was eating your face. Oh yeah, and I thought your face had been... less ugly? I... I don't know, I, I got nothing. Anyway, we're popping in here to show first that we are indeed three separate people who, get this, have only met in person one time, which is pretty crazy. But beyond that, we wanted to extend a personal thank you to each and every loyal theorist out there who've helped us achieve this tremendous milestone. And really, for anyone who has ever seen any of our videos, thank you so much. We're up to 63 million views and growing, and... Are, are you picking your nose? Oh, I I wasn't talking, so I thought I could... Am I still on camera? Of course you are. I told you to edit it that way. Oh, yeah, right. This just got really meta. In the end, we get a lot of letters from you guys thanking us for doing our show, but the fact of the matter is, you're the ones to thank. You give us a reason to do something that we love week in and week out, so as much as this is a celebration of us and our milestone, it's a celebration for you guys as well. And I think that's all we've got, so click on my face to check out some old theory videos. Click on my untamed locks to watch videos you might not have seen. And click on my face if you have yet to join the ranks of the loyal theorists. Onward and upward to two million!